welcome back guys for week four of my flight training experience. So if you're new here, my name is Luis Rodriguez. I am a current student pilot over at the ATP location in Tampa. Um, and if you've already been watching my videos, thanks for coming back. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep on going into the videos and I'm gonna keep on vlogging my experience and hopefully bring some uh, good educational videos and help you guys kind of make decisions on what type of flight schools you want to go to, if this flight school is the one for you, if you like the pacing of it, etc. All right, so let's get into the video. All right, so hopping right into it, week four has been in addition to week three, basically. It's been TOL phases, so we're basically just doing takes, takeoff and landings, um, literally just going up in the air, taking a left turn, another left turn, making a whole rectangle around the airport, and then landing. Getting about, I would say, eight to 10 landings a day. So pretty good practice. It takes about two hours per flight. So it's been it's been really fun. Um, the schedule has been basically, you go to school uh, maybe two hours before and kind of get like things ready. So you do your pre-flight, you do your weight and balance, you get all your documents, make sure the plane is ready to fly and will be good for your flight. And then you have your two hour flight block. And then after that, you do your debriefing with your instructor. And it's really your choice. Uh, if you wanna stay and you know, keep on studying with other students around you or go home. Personally, I just go home. I like to study by myself. Um, I just get things a lot more efficiently done that way. So that's basically been my Monday through Friday. So yeah, and going into the TOLs, just to kind of break it down a little bit more. Um, basically, it's been, like I said, going in a rectangle, landing and uh, taking off. Now, what's been really cool about it has, the weather here has been pretty, um, I would say consistent, but definitely challenging. Um, it hasn't been not directly, so if you're not aware of aviation, uh, whenever you take off and land, you want to take off and land into the wind, you wanna have a headwind coming. So typically the winds have been from, I would say about a 30 degree bank. Sometimes we even had a direct crosswind and that day was pretty crazy. Uh, it gets really challenging because there's a lot of different things that you have to keep in mind for, especially when you're dealing with the wind. Um, you being in the air and you know, a 1500, 2000 pound aircraft, it pushes you pretty, pretty significantly. You definitely got to take into account everything that you're going through. And for example, one of the really cool things that we've been doing has been forward slips and uh, just normal landing slips. So in that case, you'll go ahead and actually put your rudder opposite of the wind and your wing low into the wind. So if it's a right wind, um, you're gonna go ahead and put your right wing low into it. So you're kind of like drifting in the air, which seems really crazy, but the more you get a hang of it, it seems really cool. Um, it's very fun. Um, then you come in for your landing. Uh, you're just aiming at your point. You hit, you go, you go, go. And then you wanna go ahead and flare, back wheels first and then front wheel. So learning everything, putting it all together, you know, landing a plane. It's awesome. So yeah, that's basically been my week four. Um, like I said, nothing too special, just takeoffs and landings. Uh, I actually have my TOL eval coming up. So I'm gonna have an instructor actually get into the plane with me and evaluate how my landings have been coming along. Um, it's a different instructor than your normal one. So it gives you kind of like an experience where, you know, maybe they can teach you something that your other instructor isn't or just a different alternative way. And then for a future, insight so after your TOL phase you actually hop right into your solo prep phase so next week we're going to be basically getting ready um, to do your takeoff and landings and then you're also going to be practicing your different maneuvers and you're basically going to start getting ready to fly a plane by yourself so that's the next step that's really cool can't wait super excited for it all right so that'll pretty much wrap up my week four experience um, now we'll go ahead and talk about something that actually took me about four weeks to figure out, and that is actually a cockpit management. So this will be really helpful for new students that are coming in and maybe even students that are already in. And it's something that, like I said, took me a while to understand and was a kind of a trial and error. 
And what the cockpit management basically is, is that you have very limited room and you need to have as max information available to you without being cluttered and you know being able to pull up whatever you need during whatever phase of the flight you're in. So a big example of this is when I first started, ATP requires you to have an iPad with GPS. That way you can use uh, the app for flight on it. So I actually have an iPad Pro, uh, the 12.9 inch. And for you, those of you that don't know what that looks like, it's basically uh, my version of a my laptop and it's massive. That's my head next to it. So keep in mind, it works great. Um, every, you know, this is what I use my to do for my video editing and uh, my watching videos, my studying, everything. Having such a big screen really helps. But when you're in a cockpit and you gotta have this onto your lap and then you gotta have your flight controls and be able to have full movement of the flight controls, this is a really expensive iPad. And if I really need to take a left turn, I don't wanna have to decide, all right, either I can't make a left turn because I'm gonna crack my expensive iPad or I'm gonna crash a plane because I don't wanna crack my iPad. So it took me a little bit of trial and error, um, definitely within like by, uh, honestly by last week is when I started figuring out, I was like, yeah, this iPad is just way too big, it's gotta go. So another recommendation that my instructor had was actually the iPad mini. So yeah, it's the GPS model, so it still allows me to do the four flight, but as you can see, the size difference is massive. And fitting this in my lap is no problem. I have this with my checklist and I'll actually drop a video right now of what that looks like in the cockpit. And it just helps me out tremendously. I mean, I get full range of motion for my controls and I still have all the information I need readily available. So for students that are coming in, cockpit management definitely, uh, you know, if you could save yourself the money and if you wanna save yourself the time and the headache, definitely keep that in mind for consideration. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching week four. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for week five. Deuces.